Well, a very good evening to you and welcome to our program tonight. I say evening because we're doing this on Thursday night ahead of Friday afternoon. And word is it in uh, the Eastern Cape in Quebecha that it is raining there, has been for most of the last couple of days. And uh, Nino Podesta joins me on the line from Cape Town. Nino, the word coming through is that uh, at this stage, all we know is that it is going ahead on the turf, but it may well change to poly. And just the word of caution to those watching this program, that if it does change to poly, uh, we will have to change our selections. So these selections are designed by Nino Podesta to be on the turf track. And uh, if there is a change in service, then we will change those selections accordingly. But Nino Podesta joins us from Cape Town. Good evening to you, Nino. How are you? Good evening, Nika. I'm good. And yourself? I'm very well, thanks. This Early this morning, we're still speaking to you on a Thursday, was the uh, July gallops out at Gravel. I don't know if you had a chance to watch those this morning, early. Did you, did you have a look and see? Uh, uh, I saw a couple of them on, on the 240 channel. With uh, I think Clyde Basil was presenting it. I saw, I, I, saw, um, I can't remember, uh, a couple of them I did see. Not all of them, Nika. What did you make of them, the ones that you saw? Uh, I saw a red, a red, a red section. I didn't actually see any of, of the horses that, that I give chances to. So, yes. Uh, uh, I saw uh, um, Jet Dark uh, gallop, but he galloped on his own, so I you couldn't see much on that. Uh, red Saxon, I saw galloping with some with a stable companion. He, he looked, uh, he galloped well. Um, well, I, I did not see uh, uh, any of the horses that I fancy, though, Nico. Okay. I had a chance to watch the uh, decock horses galloping. Uh, they galloped in pairs. So you had um, the two horses, Safe Passage and Aragosta, galloping together. And then you had uh, Sparkling Water and um, uh, Al Mutana galloping together. And uh, I thought all of them put up uh, good gallops. I thought Almatana galloped better than Sparkling Water, but that's not to say that Almatana will beat Sparkling Water. Um, I thought that Sparkling Water has got a massive chance in the running of the big race next weekend with Samanga Kamalo on board. I think that's got a big, big chance. And then in terms of Safe Passage Aragosta, I think both have got lively possibilities. Uh, one's got Warren Kennedy now. Aragosta's got Warren Kennedy. Muzzy Yeni rides safe passage. I think I think Mike DeCock is going to win this year's July. I don't know with which one, though. That's the question. Yeah, Nico, you could probably uh, do that. Uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't. And uh, But I, on the other side of the coin, I think it's a very competitive July. Uh, and... To be honest with you, I think it's one of the hardest Julys uh, to pick a winner. I think there's quite a few horses with chances. Well, we've got lots of programming coming up in the next week, Nino. So just before we go into the Fairview program, I am going to be speaking to Mike DeCock in a one-on-one -on -one interview, going through his runners on July Day. So that I'm hoping to do in the next few days. And then the big carrot for next week for all our Clock in the Gallop listeners is the in-depth discussion with the one and only, the racing guru of them all, of all gurus, Robert Bloomberg. Um, the ringer. The ringer. We're speaking to the ringer, Robert Bloomberg, about each and every race running at Gravel, Hollywood Bets Gravel next week. We're hoping to get a sponsor on board as well. More about that during the course of the next week. But Robert's kindly agreed to come on the show and we're probably going to air that from next Wednesday onwards on this particular channel. So we're really looking forward to it. And it is proven to be extremely popular over time. Yeah, Nika, isn't he just a legend, uh, Robert Bloomberg? And always ready to help. Humble. That's the kind of guys we need in racing. And, Absolutely. Uh, we're looking forward to chatting to him. But let's go to our uh, racing on friday at the moment it is rain affected now i can tell you that the the, the penetrometer reading for fairview was done 
earlier on this Friday at about half past three. And at that stage, the track condition was still good on the turf track, but they had about eight millimeters of rain. But that may well change overnight. There'd be no withdrawals on the card, but let's run through it now with Nino. Let's go to race one. Race one is a maiden juvenile plate for fillies round the turn 1400. And here you're going for Eclair as your top choice number four. Yeah, uh, Nika, I think this is a two-horse race, but uh, before we even carry on with the court, uh, we need to stress that this was done as a turf meeting, and and even if it is on the turf tomorrow, Nika, the going is going to have a big say in the outcome of a lot of races, especially with my best bet on the court uh, later. So I think that, um, if it stays on the turf, I, I think he cleared the, uh, the flower alley, uh, brilliant first run, and um, and uh, Sugarberry, I think those two will fight it out. Uh, I think you could get a, a bit of improvement from uh, number one, uh, sorry, number two, Bavarian Jet, and also number seven, Lady Shiva. But uh, uh, for me, uh, a boat race between four and 11. Okay. Uh, both well-bred horses, the one is a, a flower alley and the other one is an ideal world. They, they will love the, uh, the well, uh, Sugarberry has gone 1400 already, but uh, um, uh, what's the name? Eclair, being out of flower alley by Western Winter, I think she'll love the extra 200 meters, and I think the, those two will fight it out. Okay, well, we did have the Cots and Stable winning with Carbonado last Friday, so they could well follow up and win the juvenile race again here, yeah, but 4 11, 2 and 7 on Nino's selections for race one, which is the start of the bipod. Now race two kicks off the place accumulator up the straight 1200 meters. It is a juvenile plate. The off time is 1240. I'm just having a look here. Note in this race that number seven, the reflex has a tongue tie and a compression mask goes on number two, Kanya's Hope, which is your selection here, Kanya's Hope, gelded after its last run, that's important. Yeah, that is, and Nika, I think she's, uh, she's run against much stronger. If you just have a look at, uh, uh, she's run behind Clifftop and Coria, two horses that were thought good enough to go uh, contest feature races in Durban. Uh, so uh, I think she's going to be very hard to beat on that kind of form. Uh, number one, Coastal Pass did win first time out on the old going. But again, we've got to make sure that it, this race doesn't go to Polly. And, and then the only other horse I think is Indigo. She's three kilos better with Coastal Path for a, a 1.75 uh, beating. I think she could get much closer. So I think uh, Kaya's hope to beat uh, Indy's view and Coastal Path. But I'm um, quite strong with Kaya's hope. Yeah, Kaya's hope uh, is a son of the United States. Has had four runs and the runs, as you mentioned, behind Clifftop and Ecoria, especially that last run behind Ecoria was a good one giving Ecoria two and a half kilos and running four lengths back. And I believe that Kaya's Hope, as, as you've tipped it first, is the horse to beat over there. Two from five, one and three. Race three starts off the pick six. A maiden over a thousand meters runs at quarter past one. Uh, changes in the third race. Number one, Merediva has a compression mask and Blinkers Tongue Tiger on number four, Psychedelic Eric. Compression mask on number five, Goom Goom. Right, your selection here. You go with Maradiva uh, to win and beat home the field here. Maradiva ahead of Miss Rose and my Lord and Master. One nine two. Yeah, Nick, I think it's a very trappy race. This uh, Maradiva, it's, uh, it's got the form, but uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, um, you know uh, horses here that have, have been tested and tried, had a lot of runs. Uh, Mary Diva and Miss Rose they have got the best form, but uh, there are lurkers hanging around here. A horse like Goon Goon, yes. very well bred by Val, extra cock. He could show any kind of improvement in PE. He, he ran 11 lengths behind who's that star, but he's running against much uh, weaker here tomorrow. And then there's two well bred uh, first timers from the Alan Creer uh, stable. The one used to be with the cock, but uh, never ran for him. Um, Southwester by Invincible Spirit. And then you got the well bred Jemaya uh, by Ideal World. And you know, Nico, uh, they don't have to be very good to, to be a, a beat the field like this. Uh, any market uh, support for, for these uh, has to be taken seriously. And then I also give a bit of a chance to Tipsy to Tina. I think she's a, um, 
quite a uh, quite a high uh, a long shot in the race. She she contested the the feature race last time. She ran behind the Corey. I think you can put a line right through that race uh, that run. But uh, on the third behind Easy Living before that, she's going to have a chance. Very trappy races, race number three, uh, Nika, especially if the going is heavy tomorrow and uh, it's going to be difficult for Maladiva to come from a one draw on, on heavy going. Okay, so not the easiest of contest that in the third race of the day. I was just quickly going here to some stats because uh, working with Alistair Cohn earlier on today, we were looking at the race for the apprentice jockey title between Rachel Vinica and Caden Brewer. Now I know Caden Brewer gets a lot of winners down in the Eastern Cape at the moment. Um, as of today, um, it looks like there are 13 winners at part. Rachel Vinica is 13 winners ahead of Caden Brewer. Yeah, she must have ridden a couple of weeks. The last time I saw she was nine. She was nine ahead. Now she's yeah. 13 ahead. She's 13 ahead. So she does have a nice cushion. She could well uh, go on to win. So there's only five or six weeks left to the end of the season. Okay, so you're liking number one, Maradiva, the two to one chance to beat him, Miss Rose, and my Lord and Master with fourth going to number 14, Tipsy Tina. There's been a bit of money for Tipsy Tina in from 10 to 1 to 8 to 1. Right, let's move on to race number four now. The fourth race off at 10 to 2 is a maiden plate fillies and mares, 1,400 metres. In race four, there are no changes to take note of. And your top choice here is number two, Sail Away With Me, who I called last time out. And I've got to say that she ran from way back to finish second. I actually liked her strongly last time out. And she got going too late in the day, but uh, ridden a bit closer by Greg Sheen. She's definitely right up there today. I mean, on uh, Friday. Yeah, Nika, uh, she's, she's got to be on four and doors to beat. Uh, she's run, if she doesn't win a maiden tomorrow, uh, then I think she's going to struggle to do so. Uh, she's meeting a very mediocre kind of field. Uh, it can only be a bit of improvement from uh, number five, uh, the just as well. Uh, uh, Philly uh, Alastriona. I don't know what that means, but, but anyway, Alast it Alastriona. Like Alastriona. Uh, with Warren Kennedy drawn one, that could show some uh, improvement. Uh, not a bad first run behind Fedra. And remember that Fe uh, Fedra franked that form by running fourth and then winning again after winning a maiden. So that form has been franked. I think that's a most, uh, the most likely horse to give uh, Sal away with me. Uh, a run for its money. Uh, and then uh, the only other two I give chances to is Galileo, number three, and number eight, uh, Dream Star, the Admiral Kitten horse. She's had the two educational runs, not far behind. And, um, you know, you've got to always be careful with these uh, horses from the Cotson stable. They usually uh, show the best of the two or three runs. Okay, so that's a 258 Dream Star tipped to improve, which is a two year old daughter, Admiral Kitten, and three is fourth Galia. Okay, let's move into race five. We're now for the punters out there. 25 past two, the off time of this Phillies and Mayor 66 handicap over 1400 meters in race five. Let's look at the changes. Compression mask on number eight, Tamil Tiger. No blinkers for number 15 under my hat. Right, your numbers in the order that you like them. You like Chloris, which we've gone for a few times before. Ahead of Ford March, third to the 11 French Joy, fourth number 13 Grey Princess. And Nico, I think if this uh, race stays on the poly and the going is the, uh, not so heavy, I, I definitely I, I am very strong on Chloris. I think. Uh, She's got the form to win this kind of a race, and uh, 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 that's my uh, clear and strong first choice. Uh, placing the, the become difficult after that. Uh, I, I think maybe forward more tonight was fancied last time. Uh, that could have a chance. And uh, 11, if it goes to Polly, I actually made a selection for Turf and Polly here. If it goes to Polly, then number 11, French Joy will come in with a bit of a chance at the nice price. 
and and uh, and also if it stays, I haven't tipped Louvain. I know I went for it last time. Yes, I you didn't did. Like the poly. I think if this stays on, on the turf, uh, then I think that comes into the reckoning. Number fourteen, Louvain, and uh, and thirteen, uh, uh, Great Princess. But I'm very strong on Claudius. Yeah, I think uh, if it remains on the turf, Chloris is a big, big runner. Uh, we've been for a few times before. Tara Lang trains this uh, Ryan Munger rides and uh, could well be the right horse in race five. Paging on to race six for the public. It's three o'clock for a classified stakes, 1,400 meters. Uh, changes in race six. Compression mask on number 10, ideal view which you've tipped for fourth here, you've gone for bold resolve and so much so that you've tipped this as the best of the day. Yeah, Nico, I did. Uh, not knowing about uh, uh, the state of the going and uh, if it gets changed to poly, I, I don't think this horse will run. That's the first thing. I don't think Alan Creep will run this horse on the poly tomorrow. And also uh, this horse comes from way back. So if the going is very heavy, We've got another problem here because I don't know if it's going to make up that kind of ground uh, on heavy going. But the way it finished last time, I think he was very unlucky. Greg Sin was drawn uh, 15 out of 16, I think. Uh, he came out a, a, a bit slowly and Greg Sin found himself uh, way, way back with, with too much uh, uh, too much ground to make up. But he did finish strongly to run five lengths behind and we danced. Uh, I think over 1,400 Greg Sin is going to even... Is, a little bit better drawn tomorrow at 11. And, but I think Greg is going to have him closer to the pace. And uh, if you have a look at his penultimate run over course and distance, when he, when he did beat Claudius by, by almost three lengths. I, I think this, if the going is good or not too heavy, I, I think this horse is going to be very, very hard to beat. But we have to be careful here, Nico, because uh, uh, either if it goes to poly, uh, it might be uh, uh, withdrawn. And if the going is very heavy tomorrow, then I don't know if he's going to be able to make up that kind of ground as, as he likes to, to run from way off the post. Mm. Mm. Actually had the chance to speak to one of the joint owners today, Daryl Utah, who owns Bold Resolve. They, he said that uh, the ownership partnership were expecting a good run from the source on Friday, so looking forward to seeing Bold Resolve run, and we'll give that uh, information to you in a moment to see what price it is. Right, let's move on to race seven. The hashtag this is racing merit rated 74 handicap over 1600 meters. Changes in the seventh race. Um, it doesn't look like we've got any, so that is clear. And your tip you're ending up going for gold rock number four ahead of three Essos. And two, Alado's pride, four, three, and two. Yeah, Nick, I'm looking for Terry Lang to have a good day tomorrow. This was on its last run behind Ang Solo and the two previous runs behind Ferrari Ice. I think this is uh, the strongest form in the race. Uh, Ferrari Ice, as you know, came out to beat the strong field last time out. And Solo, that was a very, very good run uh, against top class horses there in that race. Uh, wasn't I think grazing in was grazing in the grass was in that race if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was. When, uh, uh, yeah, and, you're right. Was it Dan Solo? Was grazing in the grass? Um, in the race with Dan Solo was no, complete. Uh, no, I thought you were talking about uh, the. You were referring to the horse earlier on about Ferrari Ice. Wasn't Ferrari Ice in the race with? With grazing in the grass last week, I think it was last week. Yeah, but I'm saying when I'm solo. Remember uh, two weeks ago when Glenn Cotson took four horses. Uh, yes, him, yes. And he won with three of them. Musical glitch that yes. beat uh, Santa Teresa. Uh, I'm yes. solo. I think beat a top class field that day. Yes. And uh, Gold Rock ran third, but ahead of some very very uh, nice horses. Uh, uh, drawn five, Ryan Manga. I think this is a horse to beat. I know Vida Futura is his favorite, but she's coming from a, a 15 draw tomorrow. Uh, I, I think Gold Rock is, a, is the right horse in this race. Uh, I do believe what. Yeah, Han Solo beat Phoenix. Han Solo beat Phoenix. Beat Phoenix. Yeah, that was the horse that it beat, yeah. 
But in third place was another top was, class horse. Third was Gold Rock in that race. Oh, third. Oh, correct. Yeah. She ran just behind Dan Solo and Phoenix. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, you, yeah, you were mentioning the favourite, which, which uh, again, Daryl Utah, um, the guy that I spoke to today, owns Vida Futura, and they were expecting a big run from this too. Runs in Greg Blank's colours, the royal blue with a fuchsia star. Yeah, I give it a chance. I'm just worried about the draw. You know, drawn yeah, it's not drawn well. Make yeah. life easy. And also, uh, second run uh, in PE, when was it March 22, March, April, May? Uh, second run after uh, arrest. I'm not actually a believer in that, but I, I'm, I'm worried about the draw, Nico. Drawn 15. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we've got to kick on to the last of the day. Race eight at 10 past four is a Phillies and Mayor 70 handicap. It's up the straight thousand meters. Changes in the eighth race. A tongue tie on number four, Wire Yaya. No blinkers for six, keeping the piece who also has a tongue tie on and a compression mask on number 11 after the storm. So just going to that final race of the day, you're going here for the outsider number 14, Blind Love, who you've tipped as the value bet for the day. It's not the first time that you're going for a 20 to 1 value bet, and Blind Love is 20 to 1 when we're recording the show on Thursday night. You've tipped that to beat number 8, Fedra, 1, Pam's Princess, and 12, Sophia Erin. Now tell us why you like this 14 horse, Blind Love. I don't think the horse should be uh, 20 to 1. I think he's, he's uh, best over the 1,000 metre on, 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 on the turf. So last time out over the 1,200, as you can see in your, he was drawn 1 out of 13. And he only yeah. uh, faded the last bit. I think the 1,000 is, is perfect for this horse. I do believe he, he's best over the 1,000 on the turf. And I think there's value at 20 to 1. I, I don't believe he's a 20 to 1 shot. Obviously, uh, Fedra and uh, Pam's Princess are, are the four horses, but we have a problem if it goes to Polly, then Fedra's uh, jumping from a 15 draw, which is going to yeah. make it very difficult. And so will it make it for uh, Blind Love, and I don't believe he is a Polly horse, but I do then like a horse, if it goes to Polly, then this big outsider of mine, a horse called Sophia Heron, is going to come into the reckoning. That 33 to 1, drawn 3, uh, I think she's going to be a, 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 a big runner if, if this meeting goes to the poly. Okay, well, we'll find out more about that on Friday morning. But those are our selections. Um, as we stress, based on the fact that it's still on the turf on a Thursday night at this stage and things may change come Friday morning. And if they do, we will bring you the relevant updates here on clocking the gallop right it is now time to run through the buy pot for nino and yeah. we'll also go through the best bet and the value bet but buy pot starts off in race number one and uh let's go and have a look at it only a 28 rand perm mostly bankers but a couple of horses you're going a couple of legs rather you're going wide yeah um the Nico, the bipod is 28 rand, and we're banking in number four, uh, Eclair in the first. I'm banking in number two, Kaya's Hope in the second. Third race, I'm putting in a few horses. I'm putting in one, Maradiva, two, My Lord and Master, five, uh, The Lurker, Goom Goom. I'm putting in nine, Miss Road, and I'm also adding in the two uh, Andre sources, 11, South, Wester, and 12, Jemiah. And I'm putting in number 14, Tipsy Tina. Uh, the fourth leg, I'm putting in four horses. Number two, Salaway with me. Three, Galilea. Five, El Elastriona. And I'm putting in eight, uh, Dreamstar. Then it's uh, Banker two, Claudus. And Banker three, Bold Resolve. That will okay. cost you 28 rand. That's and for nothing there. Two rand 80 gets you 10%. Five rand 60 gets you 20%. 
And it is certainly just a bet that you do want to get involved in uh, with Nino's numbers four by two by one, two, five, nine, 11, 12, 14 by two, three, five, eight by banker two by banker three. Confirming that the best bet for the day is in race six, number three, bold resolve. This one currently in the market at three to one. And the value bet for the day is in the last race, race eight, where he's gone for number 14, Blind Love, who's easy to back at 20 to 1. Right, that's our racing at Fairview. Um, and we only have a couple of minutes show left. So enough time, Nina, for us to remind people that next weekend is the running of the Hollywood Bets Durban July. But more importantly, that uh, Clock in the Gallop Extra is getting together to do our tipping sheets, which has proven extremely popular in the past year or so. Yes, it has, Nico, and uh, we, we, we've had a lot of support, and um, we, I'm grateful to all the people that uh, support us on, on these um, extras that we have. And, uh, you know, we, we, we go out of our way to try and, and, and study the cards and, and bring the best information to them. Yes, we do. And it's a team effort. Again, I reiterate that a lot of people turn around to us. They say to us, why do you do a program and then you charge for these? Well, these are joint efforts, Nina. These, everyone contributes to. The programs that we're doing now are your personal view on it. Sometimes I might add my two cents worth, but overall, the shows that we do on YouTube are individual tipsters coming up with the selections and then um, we are going to be selling our selections for the four days starting next Friday, the 1st of July, through until the Monday, the 4th of July. There's a meeting at Fairview. There's a meeting, obviously, down in Durban, the big one, the Hollywood Bits Durban July meeting. And there's a meeting on Sunday at Turfontaine, the 3rd of July. So for 250 Rand, you can get our tipping sheets. All you have to do is do your deposit in our Clocking the Gallup First National Bank current account. The number is 6290-552-8321 and send us your proof of deposit and you'll be listed on the list of people to receive our tipping sheets on all four mornings of the race meetings in question. If you do want to check out further information or send us a note or email, go to clockingthegallop.com. That's www.clockingthegallop.com. And let's hope that you are on board with us for next weekend. Nino, last word with you. Yeah, Nico, uh, uh, I just simply, uh, it's a nice initiative. Uh, let's say we get a lot of support and, uh, and hopefully that everything goes well tomorrow. And uh, just to remember my, my, my value bet in the last blind love is based on, on turf. Yeah. I have to stress that. Well, as I said, we will give an update to the people out there if there are any major changes with regard to the selections on Friday morning and the surface does change. Because as you know, with bookmaker bets, if you take bets and the surface changes, your bets are null and void and you have to retake them. Mm -hmm. And that's how Clock in the Gallop will work with our selections. If there's a change of surface, we will either reaffirm our selections or we'll have to rehash them to to make it more appropriate right nina i've had a long day thanks so much for joining us we will of course uh, engage with you on the hollywood bets durban july sometime next week i maybe think that it's time for us to get together to do a short little program apart from robert bloomberg's program for yourself myself and neil and maybe the ghost rider in a in the background to come on as the as the normal strong clock in the gallop team that we are and uh, just have a brief conversation about the July. But I, got, I can tell you one thing is that I saw Captain's Ransom work today on her own. And what a champion that racehorse is. I mean, she looked a million dollars. And when I say a million dollars, you can underline that with dollar signs. She looked top class. Nico, how many times have I told these people you're all against me when she ran against Shansone. I've tipped her and tipped her. I haven't stopped tipping her. That is an absolute machine. That horse is not going to get beaten. Not on, uh, not next week uh, and not for the while. Not ever. That's yeah. an absolute... Uh, that horse has got gears. 
Absolutely. Nina, less than a minute left. Thank you very much for your time on this Thursday evening. Have a great day on Friday, and we'll re-link uh, in with you if there is a change of surface. Thank you, Nico. All the best. Eh? Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.